the issues affecting you. Revealed, explained, discussed. Now on WGAL 8 In Focus. Hello, I'm Susan Shapiro. It's a new year and a new session for the Pennsylvania Legislature. Tonight, we'll talk to two lawmakers from both parties about how they plan to work together and tackle things like unemployment and the COVID-19 vaccine distribution as we bring the issues in focus. I am joined now by House Majority Leader Kerry Benninghoff, a Republican who represents Mifflin and Center Counties. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having us. Representative, there's been so much discourse uh, between Republicans and Democrats, not only at the national level, but in Harrisburg. So how do you go forward uh, and and handle things with the Democrats? You know, everybody's responsible for their own behavior. But as new majority leader, I've only been in this position for six months. I've actually met with the new minority leader, Joanna McClinton, out of Philadelphia. And her and I have talked about this, and we're going to do our best to try to um, differ in party titles and differ maybe in issues, but try to keep as much harmony as we can on the floor. At the end of the day, it is a new year. Uh, a lot has changed, a lot happened in 2020. And it doesn't mean we're not always gonna agree on every single thing, but you know, I think her and I both share an interest in our faith and we believe that there are better things ahead of us as a state if we work together on issues that we can, but keep focused on the, the positions that we hold and not about uh, party lines right now. Well, that sounds like a good thing. But uh, given what happened at the U.S. Capitol, the insurrection, do you regret calling on Congress to block the awarding of Pennsylvania's electoral votes? Uh, at the time, it was early in uh, late November, early December. We were inundated with people who had inquiries or problems that they had at the polls, uh, access being able to get a vote, receiving multiple ballots. And our goal really was asking just to get time for us to be able to get answers to these people why these things were happening. At this point, do you think Pennsylvania had a free and fair election? I think the election speaks for itself. The results are in. We have a uh, new treasurer, a new uh, auditor, and a new president. So the, the votes are counted. You know, our concern and our focus right now is about the process. And there, I believe both parties, including people in the County Commissioner Association, have talked to us. Uh, there is concern about making sure that the process is followed in the letter of the law. Some complain about Act 77. You know, when people don't get results that they want, whether it's in a football game or election results, they're always looking for someone to be able to, to say it's their fault or whatever else. At this point, our caucus is focused on the process and making sure that for the next election cycle, because we will still be using a mail-in ballot system, the letter of the law is followed. I think that should be more concerning for everybody at this point. All right, well, let's move on to unemployment. Yeah. It seems the system in Pennsylvania has failed. Uh, you know, tens of thousands of people. What do you think the needs to be done going forward. We've had a secretarial change there, and yet uh, we still see a lot of bumps in the system. It's very, very frustrating. Uh, now, I'll give some lenience that nobody anticipated what was going to happen with COVID. No one anticipated COVID and the numbers of unemployed individuals. But with today's technology, I think it's an abysmal that we cannot get people the relief they need quicker. Now, you think about any credit card you use, you can go to any state and union, you can go to another country and use that. And I guarantee a visa is gonna find you by the end of the month and we send you a bill. That with today's technological abilities and computerization, uh, we should be able to administer this faster and better and more consistency. It's very frightening for families that are first of all, scared death about a pandemic and an illness that they never heard of. And then suddenly find themselves not employed the shutdown happened very abruptly. Uh, we were frustrated, as you know, in the legislature that we were not a little bit more engaged in those decisions. And again, I don't want to look backwards, I want to look forward, but we just need to make sure uh, that that second rollout for something like this is administered much more efficiently. This is not difficult. It's not like we've never had to do unemployment. Yes, we had a greater volume, but that lack of income and the uncertainty for people not knowing if they're going to have income is a very, very frightening thing. A lot of make people live paycheck to paycheck. And when they lost that, it was very scary. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll talk about priority more. for us. You'll see our committee is working very hard on that. Very good. Uh, do you think that the legislature needs to appropriate more money to l and to, to carry this out in the future? I don't think it's necessary money issue. Everybody thinks throwing more money at uh, departments. You know, frankly, uh, manpower was utilized throughout the Commonwealth from different departments to try to help with this. So more money, but generally you'd be hiring more manpower. So if you were able to cross utilize, utilize manpower that's already within the Commonwealth, to me, it's not about throwing more money. It's about having a plan, being prepared. Again, 
not looking backwards, we can say what we want about the past, but in the future, we need to know that we are going to be prepared. If something like this happened again, whether it's a pandemic or for whatever other reason, we would have a sudden influx of you know millions of people on the unemployment rolls. Our goal acutely is to not have a million people or two million people on the unemployment rolls, but get people back to work. Absolutely. All right. Well, stay with us, Representative. I'll, we'll talk more about the pandemic and the vaccine rollout in Pennsylvania. This is WGAL 8 in focus coverage you can count on. We continue our conversation with Representative Kerry Benninghoff, who represents Mifflin and Center counties as Republican House Majority Leader now. And thanks again for being here. Uh, Representative, the vaccine rollout in Pennsylvania and a lot of the nation has been slow. What do you think the state needs to do to speed things up? First of all, we're excited that we have a vaccine, obviously, as fast as we have gotten it. I do believe that we should be drawing on the talents of any nurses and doctors that want to be able to help local pharmacies. Uh, I jokingly say within my caucus, but I kind of mean it, you know, if we need more manpower to do this, why not ask the military to help? You know, we've had the uh, reserves come up in other aspects of the pandemic. I don't think there's probably anybody more efficiency in giving lots of vaccines out to a large group of individuals than the military. I believe that we can set remote uh, settings up to do this no different than we did in some of the testing areas. I think it's what people really need at this point. They would like to get beyond uh, some of the fears, and I think the vaccine is going to give people a second uh, amount of comfort in addition to some of the uh, PPE equipment and the masks that people have been using, and frankly, allow them to get back to some normalcy in their life, whether it's getting their children to school consistently, whether it's being able to get back to work. We've got a lot of young parents who are trying to be teachers and parents and, uh, you know, still running a household and everything else, and it's been very, very challenging. So I would think that there are a lot of good medical centers throughout Pennsylvania that are trying to participate, offering to participate. Uh, some have actually gotten more vaccine than what they were able to utilize. They need to have the flexibility to be able to use that additional amounts somewhere else with another group. Uh, frankly, uh, this is something that I think is really a top priority for a lot of us. Absolutely. You mentioned the military. Is there a chance that Pima could take part as well? I would think that uh, they should be engaged in this type of thing. But like I said, I think the infrastructure is already there. If it's truly a manpower issue, some will tell you it's partially manpower. Some will tell you it's also um, access to the vaccine. And obviously, every state wants to get it as quick as possible. Other countries are trying to get it. Um, I'm actually glad to see that there's additional research being done here in our own state in Pennsylvania. As you know, through some of the CARES dollars, we invested over $10 million for a couple of medical centers who are doing research because there may be a need for additional vaccines and or what some people call a second generation. Uh, the current vaccine requires a two doses. And maybe if this thing were to morph its own strand and develop something else, we may need another approach. So continued research uh, here in our Commonwealth across the country to me is still a very vital asset we need to continue to invest in as well. And my understanding is you said that state lawmakers should move down in the uh, process and not be in, uh, take other people's uh, spots, so to speak. We should not be prioritized over other individuals. Uh, I've been working very closely with the department trying to make sure that families who are also caregivers, whether voluntary or paid, who are taking care of chronically ill, whether it's children or other caretakers, pardon me, other um, mem families, other family, uh, that they should be priority. You know, this is really not necessary about titles only. It should be about who's the greatest risk to get ill, who's the greatest risk for comorbidity problems that could really compound them getting it, and those who have other issues as in being extended family. If you're taking care of a patient that's a loved one, uh, somebody that's chronically ill or has uh, other challenges, but you're also having to go out to work and come back, you're really exposing vulnerable populations. Frankly, our title as legislators should not necessarily put us up on a higher priority list. Absolutely. Just very quickly, Representative. Not everyone probably agrees with me, but that was just my point. That, well, you're entitled to your opinion. Just quickly, um, we've seen a lot about essential workers and, uh, you know, people who are lower paid. What about the minimum wage at Pennsylvania? Do you see any movement on that? Well, I think there's a national movement on that. But frankly, I've been talking a lot of uh, entry level positions right now, and people are actually paying some pretty good wages. Uh, in our own area, as a local target recently, they're starting people at $15 an hour. Uh, one of the things we've heard through the pandemic that is additionally challenging is actually having enough manpower. So there are jobs out there if people are uh, able and to get to those jobs. And I think people as employers are offering good wages to try to get that manpower 
because it's comp very competitive right now. What do you think Pennsylvania needs to raise its minimum wage? I think it's something we can look at. Uh, the number of what we might set at it is uh, probably what will be discussed. But frankly, there's a lot of um, entities that are actually paying well above that. And I think that's what helps drive the wages up is competition for good quality workers. All right, very good. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate it and good luck in this session. And coming up, we'll talk to Democratic Representative Mike Sterla, who represents Lancaster City. This is WGAL 8 In Focus, coverage you can count on. I am joined now by Representative Mike Sterla, a Democrat who represents Lancaster City. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And we appreciate it. Uh, first off, there has certainly been a lot of discourse, not only at the national level, but in Harrisburg. What do you think going forward you have to do to change that? Well, I mean, look, I, one thing that I think needs to happen is um, we need to get people to understand that a majority of what we do, particularly like in the Pennsylvania legislature, something like 95 percent of what we do gets passed without controversy. Um, that doesn't make the news because there's not much newsworthy about the fact that we all agreed on something. <laughs> it's when we disagree that that creates the conflict that then becomes, quote unquote, newsworthy. Um, and so that's what uh, people tend to focus on is the things that we disagree on. Um, I think we need to start focusing more on what we agree on. Uh, maybe even, uh, you know, I've suggested that on the in the committee structure within the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, that a bill should not actually get to the floor of the House unless there's been a hearing on it by the committee where it came from. Um, you know, sometimes uh, we we dally with some of these things for two or three years. And other times there's a bill that gets run through a committee with no hearing uh, is on the floor in two days and out of the House in another day. And that that. That's the part that I think creates most of the controversy. Hmm. Would that uh, you think that would speed up the process? Well, I think it would uh, speed up the process in that it would take a little longer initially because you'd hold a hearing on it and you'd get hear testimony. But it would it would start to vet that uh, bill a lot better than waiting till we get to the floor of the house and having people accuse each other of you know it does this or it doesn't do that. You'd know that long in advance um, and. Uh, so there's times where there's bills that come to the floor of the House and we're told it'll get cleaned up over in the Senate. Um, that to me is no way to do business. It's just, you know, basically we're we're trying to to pass something through that people know is bad in its context, the way it stands right there. Um, and then we wait for somebody else to fix it for us. Um, those kind of things, I think, shouldn't happen. And I think it would eliminate a lot of controversy, uh, quite frankly, and and we could work together better, I believe. All right. Very interesting. Let's get to unemployment. Frankly, uh, Representative Sterlo, the unemployment system has failed so many Pennsylvanians. Uh, there are people out there who have no food, who are really desperate. What has to be done to fix this system? Yeah. Well, part of what had to happen was the computer system that the state had was supposed to be overhauled. It didn't get overhauled. Um, and then the pandemic hit and uh, the number of claims, uh, you know, went tenfold overnight. Uh, and so not only were there not enough people there, but the computer couldn't handle what was going on. And, and so, uh, you know, we've, we've since updated that computer that has helped, but still we need to staff up better. We need to be prepared better. Um, and I don't think anyone saw the pandemic coming, but we have to have uh, plans in place that if and when another pandemic occurs, and I think that they, they won't be another hundred years, um, that we're ready and we know what the plan is as to how you gear up for things like these. We have a tendency not to look forward. We only look backward. And uh, we have an opportunity here, um, I believe, given the length of this pandemic to say, what did we do right? What did we do wrong? How would we do it again if we had all the, the hindsight, the 2020 hindsight, um, and then put those things in place? And if that means you have a contingency staff, if that means you have a backup computer, if that whatever it does, you need to be able to handle this kind of thing happening going forward. But what are you telling people to do right now, people who can't get through or are still very desperate? Yeah, um, look, un unfortunately, uh, you know, when people come to my office, uh, we call the Department of Labor and Industry and they put us on hold also. Uh, so it, it is, uh, again, it's, it's simply that they are overloaded. 
what I will say to people is, as, as tough as it is not getting their dollars right now, they're due those dollars. They will get those dollars. Um, and, and so uh, as long as it is a legitimate claim, those people are going to get compensated. Um, I, I hate to keep asking people for patience because it is so tough right now. Yeah, people uh, are running out of patience. Just quickly, is the legislature going to allocate more money? You said the system is updated, but does the system need more money? And just quickly. Yeah, it does. I, I think the unfortunate part is in the Pennsylvania legislature, what has happened, I believe, is that we keep waiting for the feds to bail us out. I think we need to step up to the plate. And if that means at least on a temporary basis, raising some taxes in Pennsylvania. Um, look, 30 years ago, uh, we faced a, a, a crisis in Pennsylvania where there was not enough money in the Treasury. Um, and we raised taxes on a temporary basis. And as soon as the revenue came up to the projections that we needed to meet the budget, we lowered the taxes. Given the fact that there's a pandemic, I mean, you don't normally go borrow money just for the fun of borrowing money. But if we have to go figure out a way to get more revenue during this pandemic, I think we need to figure out how to do that, whether it's borrow it or whether it's raise taxes or whatever the issue is to get the dollars in now. And we can pay that off over a longer period of time and get back to a point where we have the lower taxes and where we don't have to, to pay for the pandemic all at once, because not only are revenues down, our expenditures are way up because of the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Every state is facing that. Stay with us, uh, Representative Sterla. We'll talk more about the pandemic and vaccine distribution in Pennsylvania. This is WGAL 8 in focus. Coverage you can count on. We continue our conversation with Democratic Representative Mike Sterla of Lancaster City. Again, thanks for being here. Representative, Pennsylvania is about in the middle of all the states in terms of vaccine distribution. What are your concerns and what do you think needs to be done to speed things up? Well, the rollout has been far too slow, not just in Pennsylvania, but across the nation. Um, part of that was that at the federal level, uh, we did an unprecedented, and I, I, this is one thing I uh, give President Trump uh, credit for, an unprecedented push to get a vaccine. Uh, I think the federal government spent something between like six and seven trillion dollars trying to get the vaccine as quickly as we did. Unfortunately, there were no plans for the rollout then. Uh, at one point in time, when the vaccine was first said to be safe to use, there was about $320 million allocated for the entire United States. That's less than $1 per person to get the vaccine shipped, stored in doctors' hands, people inoculated, advertising to let people know where to go. I mean, it was just an outrageous thought that we would be able to do it for that cost. But other um, states have done better. Even West Virginia has uh, inoculated more people. Yeah. And, and I think part of it has to do with um, the, if I mean, Pennsylvania is a big state geographically. Um, and, and so we need to be willing to figure out ways to uh, and we've seen that the, the uh, yesterday, I believe it was the uh, Secretary of Health came out with new guidelines for who is going to be able to get it, where they were going to be able to get it. We've expanded the number of sites. Uh, you know, again, this is one of those things where I think we need to, uh, in, in hindsight, look back and say, how would we do this in a perfect world? And then make sure that those uh, protocols are in place as we move forward. Um, I think we're going to get up to speed. I think we're catching up. Um, but as I said, the entire nation lags in terms of what we're doing uh, with the the uh, the rollout of the of the vaccinations. All right. Well, let's hope so. Let's hope uh, it gets better. On a totally different subject, uh, the judicial system in Pennsylvania. Some Republicans have proposed changing the state constitution to change the way we elect uh, judges. Um, what's your reaction to that? Well, look, uh, you know. It's one thing to to play by the rules. It's another thing that every time you lose the game, you change the rules so it makes it more advantageous for you to win. Um, and that's what they're doing. Um, you know, we've elected judges uh, for, you know, I'm not even sure how long in Pennsylvania uh, on a statewide basis. Um, and now that uh, and as long as they were controlling the courts, uh, they were perfectly fine with that. Now that the Democrats have started controlling some of the court systems, uh, they're upset and want to change the rules of the game. Um, 
you know, that that's not how you play in a democracy. In a democracy, you play by the rules and you go out and if you have better candidates and you have better ideas and you have a better way of doing things, you win. Um, and and so uh, ultimately, I think this is this will be seen by the voters as exactly what it is, which is judicial gerrymandering. All right. And of um, course, the governor has opposed it uh, as well. Let's yeah. talk about minimum wage that has floundered in Pennsylvania for years now. We are below other states uh, surrounding us. Uh, where do you see that going? Uh, it, look, it has to change. Um, part of the thing that we're going to see coming up is uh, a housing crisis as a result of COVID, uh, with people getting pushed out of places where they couldn't afford rent or who had lost their home. Um, and part of that is due to the fact that they just aren't earning enough. And, um, you know, you can't build enough housing at today's prices that are affordable unless you extremely heavily subsidize that housing. And one way that we can ensure that families can have an affordable house is to make sure that they make a decent wage. And, uh, I, you know, I've often said I, I wish the legislature would just try living for a week or two on seven twenty-five an hour. Yeah, it's uh, impossible. What think do you think the minimum wage should be in Pennsylvania? Pardon? What do you think the minimum wage should be in Pennsylvania? Well, uh, the goal is to get to fifteen dollars an hour. But even that, if you if you look like in Lancaster County, if you look at what it would cost to for a two bedroom apartment uh, uh, for a family to live in, um, you need to be making about seventeen dollars an hour. So even fifteen dollars an hour is less than is necessary. But certainly seven dollars an hour is is not even you, you, like I'm not sure why we even allow that. Uh, and people keep saying, well, but most people are making ten dollars an hour. Ten dollars an hour is not enough to get by. Um, and the it's the expected cost of like a hamburger at McDonald's goes up a nickel. Um, I, I don't know about anybody else. but I'm willing to pay a nickel more for a hamburger at McDonald's if my fellow citizens actually get to live in decent housing and and get to have some health care and get to have some things for their family. All right. Well, thank you, Representative. We appreciate your time and good luck uh, as the new session begins. Thank you for joining us for WGAL 8 In Focus. For all of us here at WGAL, I'm Susan Shapiro. Be sure to join us next Saturday for WGAL 8 In Focus at 7 o'clock after NBC Nightly News.